in 2004, I was sent to LA to be a correspondent for the Sunday Style section. All I did was look out for new trends and uh, cover Hollywood and a lot of lifestyle stories. And one day, the Sierra Club called me mentioning that you know, they knew some women members who were in incorporating environmental values into their wedding planning. These were people who were already recycling and buying their produce at farmers markets. And the wedding was basically an extension of their values, so it was very natural for them. The story came out, it was entitled How Green Was My Wedding and it was a hit. It became one of the most emailed stories that week. In general, the wedding can be as gorgeous, as stylish, as big or small, although obviously being green uh, entails simplifying and cutting out waste and excess. But in general, uh, what the wedding planner uh, and the couples are gonna try to do is find that alternative that's gonna reduce their impact on, on the earth. And in the book, I write about the fact that even though my, I didn't plan my wedding as a green wedding, because in this case, the groom and bride were paying for everything, we were trying to basically simplify and e economize. Instead of having one big party in one place, uh, we decided to have two small parties in two different places. We held a, a wedding for about 70 people in San Juan and then we had uh, the California wedding in our backyard. What you're doing is bringing the wedding to the guests rather than have the guests fly to the wedding. So that was one green element that, you know, I was so delighted to know that I had actually thought about without, you know, being green at the time. You want to have nature almost like the star guest of the wedding and at the same time that helps you economize on things like flowers because you have the natural beauty of the setting. Uh, it could be a backyard, it could be a farm. Parks are very popular, a beach that uh, offers a natural decor. The other uh, venue that stands out is a farm in upstate New York that charged about $10,000 for weddings, but the, the uh, fee was tax deductible because it went straight to a university that was doing research on the endangered pearly mussel of the Hudson River. To me, that is, that those are very creative ways of being green and, and, and having the wedding of your dreams at the same time. So a wedding planner who specializes in, in green events would probably have a great uh, Rolodex or uh, roster of, of services that they themselves have vetted, helping the couple then, you know, just choose the right people. One thing that would be very helpful for couples is that wedding planners who are specializing in, in green events, um, first of all, walk the walk by being green themselves and talk about how they themselves are a green business. People who are environmentally conscious tend to know their subjects very well and they tend to also try to educate others because they, they believe in this cause. A vendor who is following environmental practices would immediately come up with three things, you know, like uh, I drive a Prius or, well maybe not a Prius, and not that Prius is, has gotten in trouble, but you know, I drive an energy efficient car. Making money obviously is a, is a priority because it's a business, but I think you know, you could probably make much more money not being green uh, because right now I feel that this is a trend that is still, you know, a minority in the vanguard of it. And it's something that is going to grow because global warming is not going away. In my book, I call them pioneers. They're all pioneers. The only element of the green wedding that is more costly is the organic menu. And many couples replace that with local. They just don't go organic. and. They just go with local and by going local, they are also being green. The dress is a very touchy subject <laughs> for brides. I found that even the greenest bride may, uh, you know, balk at the idea of wearing second hand. But I have to believe that this is a trend that's here to stay because of the astronomical price of gowns these days. There are shades of green. You can be very green, you can be light green, and everything in between. And it's a matter of um, trying to convince yourself that you're going to look just as beautiful, you know, with a rented gown or a borrowed gown or a second hand gown. What you don't want is to have that gown sit in your closet for 30 years because 
believe me, your daughter is not going to wear it. But there are problems with, you know, gowns and you don't know if, you know, the gown, the brand new gown came from China and who knows, you know, if a six year old was working on this gown and I don't think you're going to feel too good about that if you found that out. You cut out the child labor, you cut out the energy use, you cut out the transportation of the gown. You can do like some of the brides in the book did. I mean, they interview the seller at length to find out um, things like, okay, you're not selling this gown because you're getting divorced, right? Because believe it or not, karma is very important to a bride and they don't want to use a gown <laughs> that, you know, is being resold because the couple got divorced.